So Rapti is here today to talk about the major changes to healthcare in Oregon. And uh, this is relevant to a lot of people. Uh, the changes are concerning trans healthcare and concerning uh, the accessibility of healthcare for um, basically everyone under a certain income level. It's pretty major news. It's a pretty major win. Uh, and uh, from here on out, Rapti, go ahead and explain what changes were made and how it's going to affect people. Okay, and uh, just, I guess you still have all the links that I sent you if you scroll up a bit, right? Because um, I wanted yeah, to make sure to have these receipts. Yeah, I can, I can, uh, I didn't put them into a there's document a lot. or anything, but yeah, there's a whole bunch. Uh, uh, if anybody has any requests, we will post the links uh, uh, on the Discord channel later. So if anybody wants to get the specifics and get down into the nitty gritty of these changes, um, Rapti, you can just post those same links at, over in the Discord. Uh, we have a Praxis Resources Center. That's okay. the perfect place for them. So you guys will be able to find that over on the Praxis Resources channel on the Discord. It's the easiest way for us to put all these links down there. If you are an Oregonian and you want to find out the like legal information about all this, those will be available to back up everything that's being said here. So yeah, go ahead. Okay, so real quick. Yeah, I'm going to link this one easy real fast because this is just an easy to, to go over one. So basically what happened in Oregon is we have decided, uh, we rather, uh, we voted to add the concept of health, affordable health care as being a universal human right. Like everybody should have it in our state. Um, that's in our constitution now. Uh, as a result of this, we've made a lot of changes and it's actually been accelerating pretty fast. Um, the first major one is that um, our, el let me rephrase this, eligibility guidelines in order to get uh, free health care in most states are 138% poverty level. Uh, with us, it's 200% of the TLDR. As long as you're making less than $29,000 a year, which is a full-time, like 50, 15 hour a week, job okay you get free health care like it's, you can be working full-time get free health care uh, also i should stress too that i'm not like an expert on this so always make sure to you know double check and everything but yeah. um you also get access to food stamps um so you get your your food discounted or free you get your health care for free now the big thing I'm here for today isn't just, oh, actually, let me step, take another step here, sorry. Mm -hmm. We also, it was, uh, took effect as of this month, anybody who's in our state, who's a resident, which uh, residency status just means you're living here with the intention to stay here. There's no minimum guideline or proof or anything, but if you're a resident, you get free health care. doesn't matter if you're like a legal or here on a visa or immigrant. You could fly here from out of country and get free health care. Again, check with immigration attorney if necessary, but for the most part, yeah. It doesn't mean it's going to um, save. It doesn't mean it's going to affect any other immigration process. But what it does mean is that Oregon is not going to decline uh, health care coverage to someone just because of their, their the situation of their paperwork, their citizenship paperwork, or their immigration status, which is a huge step up. It basically means that as far as health care is concerned, uh, Oregon is operating as a sanctuary state on that regard, that uh, people who are perhaps in danger uh, don't have to worry about not being able to have access to health care in Oregon, which is a huge step forward. Uh, yeah, in fact, we, uh, because our state doesn't really like the federal government, sometimes we actually made uh, certain to create our own health care system. It runs concurrently alongside Medicaid, uh, because sometimes with Medicaid, you can dip out of eligibility if your income goes a little bit high uh, for a month. This program means that doesn't happen to you. You still keep eligibility. Um, so really again, I want to restate, we have universal free health care to people making $29,000 or more or less a year. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter who you are. Now, that ties into trans care. And this is one of the reasons I, 
I know a lot of people uh, are understandably scared with the trans genocide and everything and wanting to move outside of the United States, but the honest, the fact is, is you'd be much rather, you'd be much better off moving here because we have the best trans health care in the world. Um, the WPATH 8 guidelines, which is the trans, uh, it's the, the document that determines, you know, like the procedures for transitioning and everything. It's, it's the one that was used to uh, gatekeep for a very long time for people. Mm -hmm. um, has updated, um, and this is universally, but anyway, so it's updated so that medically necessary procedures are for was it trans and gender diverse individuals, which means, and I love that term trans and gender diverse. So it doesn't matter. Yep. Like it gets past all the trans. It's, it's much stuff. more inclusive of non-binary people, which is a very good yeah, step it, in the right direction. Uh, yeah, the document actually lists like agender, non-binary, and like genderless, gender non-conforming as all. It acknowledges all of those as, as valid. But I'm going to go through. Or, quickly go through a list of what are considered the gen genitor affirming surgical procedures. Um, this is important. In the w, yeah, and, and this is in the, the WPATH 8 booklet, um, actually, because I'll, I'll be, sorry, I'll be linking that for certain. Um, actually, yeah, anyway, sorry. There's a lot of information. The document's like a couple hundred pages long, but at the very end, it says gender affirming surgical procedures. All right. Mm -hmm. um, these include facial surgery, basically all of it, brow reduction, augmentation, brow lift, brow hairline advancement or transplant, rhinoplasty, chin reshaping, lip filling, upper leg, everything, reduction of mandibular label, voice surgery, or sorry, includes voice surgery as well as face surgery. It also includes- Very, very big. Most, most U.S. states do not include vo voice surgery. Um, in, in their trans protections, but Oregon now does. Continue. Yeah. Um, mastectomy, so with nipple areola preservation, if you need to, uh, without it. Um, phalloplasty with or without scrotoplasty, which mean, basically will give you whatever genitals you feel are comfortable with. Um, that includes, you know, um, there's actually, it includes like, for example, if somebody identifies as like a uh, like eunuch, you know, they don't want mm -hmm. any genitals. We'll do that. If you want to have both a penis and a vagina, we'll do that. We have ways, whether you're born uh, physically male or physically female or intersex, we, we can work with that. Um, and our, uh, the trans, uh, sorry, the- At least the coverage. Bottom be. surgery. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Um, and also our health or hospitals uh, do as well. Um, we've actually been leading the country in terms of these kinds of surgeries. Um, so, yeah, it also, by the way, includes liposuction, you know, implants, um, any kind of body contouring things. It also includes hair removal from mm -hmm. everywhere. Electrolysis. And, and, and laser. And something that I think is extremely interesting, it, it's not available yet, but this is future proof so that it will cover uterine or penile transplantation. Mm -hmm. So when we get the technology to give people uteruses or penises, you know, transplanting them, it'll be covered free. Yeah. And I want to stress all of these are available for those who you know, qualify at no cost whatsoever. Now, the... Let me put this. I know one big issue that people run into is you get gatekeeping in order to get uh, qualified or diagnosed. Mm -hmm. um, with the WPATH 8 guidelines, again, which we're adopting, um, basically, you don't have to do, um, actually, let me say for... For surgical procedures, this is actually probably the bit, one of the big ones. Uh, gender incongruence is marked and sustained. Uh, you know, demonstrates the capacity to consent for the specific gender-affirming surgical intervention. You understand the effect on it. 
on your reproductive options. Um, you know, you've looked into other options and decided they didn't work for you. Um, it's also important is mental health and physical conditions that could negatively impact the outcome have been assessed. And this part's really neat. So you have to have been stable on your gender affirming hormonal treatment regimen, uh, which may be at least six months of hormone treatment or longer. It, uh, if required to sorry, if required to achieve the desired surgical result, unless hormone therapy is not desired, you do not have to get hormones to get surgery. That is a very you know, good step because there are some people who do not want to be on uh, hormone replacement therapy or can't. Yeah, so exactly. Basically, what we have here, what's been summarized here, is that most currently existing and known gender gender affirming uh, uh, surgeries and treatments are now guaranteed uh, by the state of Oregon, which is a massive win. Uh, and while it is not quite informed consent, the standards uh, for uh, gatekeeping have been greatly reduced. It is significantly lower requirements. No, none of this uh, two-letter nonsense, none of this uh, psych analysis nonsense. Uh, you have a conversation with your doctor as long as you can demonstrate that you know what, you're, uh, what you are doing and that you have a doctor who is willing to you know, sign off on it with you, you're good to go. Um, which is, again, a huge, huge, huge improvement. Uh, and as far as I know, the most uh, uh, the most progressive uh, currently existing healthcare model in the United States of America. In the world, not just the U.S., um, because a lot of countries in Europe, as a lot of, you know, in other countries, have a lot more gatekeeping. Um, also, just real quick, I'm linking to the... Transcendra Health Program for OHSU, which is our main hospital. Again, they lead the nation in terms, actually they lead the world in terms of trans health. Um, so yeah, there's essentially no other country can you go there at no, you know, and stay there at no cost to get all the surgeries you need with minimum wait times, you know, like you don't have to wait. Was it like in the UK? I know some people have had to wait, like, was it three to five uh, years for yeah, it's, HRT? It's extensive. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have to go through specialists and everything. Um, another note, touching back to general medical, um, our m m medical assistance covers in everything, dental, vision, um, prescription drugs, as well as surgery, um, seeing a specialist, uh, primary care. Um, I am, I think, a good example of this because I had a cornea transplant. I've had my wisdom teeth pulled. I've had bottom surgery. I have some uh, hair removal. And I get therapy and medication. I don't have to really pay for any of it. Um, also, a medical uh, transportation is available at no cost if you're not able to, to get your... Uh, you know, to, to drive or anything like that. Um, we really, really mean it when we say it's a fundamental human right. Um, and uh, I think that's the most thing. Uh, most everything? Yeah, yeah, if I actually want to answer any questions that you or chat may have. Um, well, chat, I think if you have any questions about it, uh, go ahead. Um, I mean, I, I, I already looked over most of the documents, so I don't really have any particularly uh, uh, deep questions about this. Mostly, I just wanted to be able to give you an opportunity as, uh, you know, uh, as someone who's much more familiar with it off the cuff, uh, the opportunity to tell people about it and also get the word out to people. Because obviously, this is going to be very important in a time where uh, large swaths of the U.S., it is becoming much more difficult and or complicated to get access to trans-related care. Um, I am somebody who has moved to a place that is more friendly because uh, the places that I lived in the past were not easy to get trans-related care. Um, and, you know, now this kind of blows my my home, you know, my current state out of the water. Uh, you know, Oregon now is, is totally lapping Washington. Um, but... Uh, but but it's it's a win, and that's what what matters most is is that's awesome, and it means that there's a possibility for people who uh, don't have access to find a place where they do. And of course, the residency requirements in Oregon, being such as they are, means that you don't have to go and you know 
uh, uh, buy a house in Oregon. You don't have to live in Oregon for long term. You can go there and qualify for care by by Stay with a friend you know, being in the state. Yeah, by by living in the state, by residing in the state, um, which is really uh, really impressive. Uh, Momo uh, Hitsu, yes, it, Hitsugaya says, "How does this affect people who can't work and are on disability?" Um, uh, I could probably answer that it, one. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, which is uh, as as far as as far as the uh, rules are stated, um, it's if your income is below that twenty nine thousand uh, uh, per year income level, you're good. So yeah. uh, you, there's no work requirements or anything for this uh, whatsoever. You don't have to be working, uh, and being on disability is not going to disqualify you from this, um, as far as any of the documentation we've seen has said. So. Yeah, I was gonna say QVT, but regardless of unemployment, um, again, this is something because it can differ specifically depending on the terms of like your insurance with your, you, you'd want to call Medicaid over here for, for this. But um, as I understand it, again, you can, you can be full-time employed at $15 an hour and qualify for this, mm -hmm. um, which is all, so that's about what, 2200 a month, which ends up actually being a livable that's a livable wage uh, for one person here um housing isn't crazy expensive out here um especially if you're like i'm in the greater metro area and we've got a two-bedroom apartment with ac uh for 1200 um that's in nice. a pretty nice area it's definitely reasonable uh, and just i guess yeah but yeah hair transplants are covered um and just some general trans goodness here i'm just going to go over this also really fast because of you know, like trans health and well-being isn't just health care. You know, it's it's a lot of other areas, uh, too. So where I live, I have, let's see. Oh, gosh, I went through the list uh, recently. I have a within walking distance, within a 15 minute walking distance, I have like a grocery store and several delicious uh, taco trucks. I have the main library, a farmer's market, um, several queer uh, friendly, store, very queer friendly stores. Um, I have a adult nightclub that is queer oriented, we'll say, <laughs> uh, especially for people who are into kink. Uh, I have a, uh, there's like a rec center with indoor pool. There are like two churches. Um, there are bookstores. There's, all of this is within a 15 minute walk. And if I want to get to downtown Portland, um, I can just hop on the bus to the light rail and it's like 30 minutes to get downtown um our public infrastructure is incredible um and if you're disabled you get a discount on it it's so definitely like, have... portland's portland's public infrastructure is definitely way more than what most americans are used to uh, it's a lot easier to get around than you might think yeah there's a hobby shop um this is the best part for trans people because it's like an autism trap. But no, there's like a, a hobby shop with like uh, trains and cars and gunpla stuff and painting and warhammer, like just all the supplies you'd ever want for that, which like, they've got transistors and all kinds of stuff. Um, that one's also a walk, a short walk away. Um, but yeah, no sales tax. Um, it's freaking great. You can ask, I know uh, Jessica, uh, Jessica Metal uh, has moved here. Um, this was before even a lot of these these changes had happened. Um, yeah. Well. And also, we decriminalized possession of all drugs. Uh, that's true. So there's that too, which is an improvement as well. Uh, take finally, finally uh, diffusing the war on drugs, and uh, yeah. So okay. Well. Uh, uh, so quick summary. Um, Oregon made. Uh, major changes. They've changed the standards necessary to qualify for trans care. They've lowered the uh, gatekeeping significantly. Um, uh, secondly, uh, they have explicitly laid out uh, long-standing and future-proofed coverage for most currently existing trans and gender-affirming uh, um, trans-related and gender-affirming care. Um, as being fully covered under any insurance operating under the state, but specifically uh, under their uh, state insurance. 
uh, and they have changed the residency requirements such that if you live in Oregon and you uh, and as you know and you're making less than twenty nine thousand dollars a year, you qualify for care, no questions asked. So these are all really, really major progressive wins. These are particularly good for trans people who might be fleeing from unsafe places here in the United States. Uh, a a huge victory and. Uh, uh, and and something that people should be very happy about and perhaps should keep in mind as a model for advocacy in their own states. Uh, Oregon's model uh, can be used as an example uh, for what other states should adopt or what other states could consider adopting, um, which would make more places safer and better for trans people to live in. Um, so uh, a couple, uh, a think, couple other points sort of... briefly. Sorry, sure, go ahead. Yeah, Almost yeah. done. Drop One, on. we're basically the headquarters for like battle queers. So like True. screw with us. Although like, this isn't seriously. an advertisement for Oregon as a whole. But yeah, I'll just true. say, no, this is for trans people. You know, it's it's a it's very inclusive and safe environment. Um, the of uh, the hospital, uh, the staff at the hospital, doctors, nurses, everybody has pronoun tags. Um, there's a lot of like queer support. And my uh, surgeon's uh, like primary assistant is trans, mask, and non-binary, uh, mm. which just seeing representation when you're in the healthcare system is so big. I can't state how huge that is for me, seeing that people who've been through what you know uh, are going to take care of you. Awesome. Well, so I, th I think it's pretty much it. Awesome. Well, Rapti, thank you so much for coming on and telling us about this. Um, the uh, Rapti is going to post the documents in the Praxis Resources channel on the Demon Mama Discord. So if you want to find out more information and dig into the legal nitty gritty and all of that, uh, that will be available on the Discord and the Praxis Resources channel. There's a ton of stuff you can read over. Most of it is very easy uh, to parse. Some of it is not. But if you're uh, if that's something that you want to get the find details on you can go do that uh oh. otherwise rapti thank you so much for coming on and uh, uh real quick sorry i see Rudon in stream chat uh, uh -huh. just very briefly this is a that's not true i mean it was founded as a clan state yes but i'm a person of color we have again we re, sorry we protested 100 days straight for blm like we have racist issues like out in the boonies like any other place but portland is incredibly incredibly like uh, inclusive that's why we abolished uh that's why we uh, decriminalized drugs like explicitly to help in the war on drugs against minoritized groups so i just wanted to just wanted to address that because i think that was really important fair um, but yes right. thank you so much no problem appreciate you having me on and i just remember not trans rats all right well thank you so much for coming on rapti have a wonderful night mm -hmm. you too bye 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 all right everybody so see as you can see pretty uh pretty good news uh 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 excellent to be able to report on something that's that positive people who are considering a move it is definitely worth if you're trans it's definitely worth considering at the very least oregon as an option as again uh, uh it's very hard to argue uh with the in the extremely progressive nature of the new changes to their health care system which are very good um and uh i gotta say it's great to see, and I gotta say, it's a good showing for the uh, for the Pacific uh, uh, Pacific uh, states. All of the, the the states bordering the Pacific Ocean right now are doing pretty dang good. So, yeah, Oregon is both is anti Florida ideologically and geographically. Coincidence? I think not. Yeah. Yep. So. Um, now, again, hopefully this will mark a, uh, a, the beginning of some other states adopting similar models to Oregon, because, uh, I think it's just good. It is good for the health of a state. It is good for the health of a populace and it's good for the world as a whole to be able to have trans people get easy and just access to healthcare.